I'm giving away this WWE Championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. Click subscribe today. Earlier today, I made a video about WWE releases. Now we have a full list of everybody who has been released today. Uh, there's some good. There's some bad. There's uh, there's some things that we're going to have to discuss in detail. Future plans pretty, pretty much seem clear. Uh, but we got to talk about this. This can't float under the radar. There's a report that came out from Axios that basically suggests Vince McMahon is setting the stage for his exit from WWE. And this is mind-boggling to me, right? This is. This is really mind-boggling. I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of the article. Then I'm going to give you guys my opinions. Uh, the new combined entity TKO has registered all of McMahon's shares for sale, thus enabling him to avoid the lockup period that applies to other TKO stockholders like Endeavor and Silver Lake. Vince McMahon currently holds around 28.84 million TKO shares, which was valued at $3 billion as of yesterday's market close. TKO first disclosed its registration plan on 184, page 184 of an SEC filing uh, early last month, and neither the company nor Vince McMahon have commented further. Basically, they go on to say that this same filing stay, say, says, excuse me, says that Vince McMahon, alongside two other TKO executives, will be selling stockholders in this offering, which is interesting. That's a lot of money that Vince McMahon could get paid out. Uh, but what's also very crazy is that TKO itself says in a regula regulatory filing that Vince McMahon's membership on our board could expose us to negative publicity and or have other adverse financial and operational impacts on our business. His membership also may result in additional scrutiny or otherwise exasperate other risks described herein. Any of these outcomes could directly or indirectly have adverse financial and operation impacts on our business. Keep in mind, TKO and Vince McMahon are not commenting on this. It sounds like Vince McMahon wants to cash out and dip. Um, and, I, and I can't let this story go under the radar. I feel like I really have to add to this. We can have personal opinions on Vince McMahon based on the allegations and and everything that, that was talked about allegedly. Um, but I, I think it's really important to have a clear, concise opinion on Vince McMahon's impact on pro wrestling. Vince did a lot for pro wrestling. He did. He took pro wrestling to a new height. He, he really did. Um, the, the reality is that WWE and their growth basically set the standard of what a pro wrestling company could be with selling pay-per-views and merchandise and house shows and live events and premium events and all of these different things, it really changed the business for, for good. Um, and it has a great impact. Without WWE, there is no impact. ML, MLW, GCW, AEW, we don't see these companies uh, at all. I, I don't think so. I, I truly believe without Vince McMahon, there wouldn't be a healthy wrestling industry. Now, I think it's also important to mention this because I feel like with Vince McMahon, and everything that they've done for the industry and how big they made WWE, and he's obviously a large part of that, I have to be very clear here. The time is up. I don't think Vince McMahon is needed in WWE. I think Vince McMahon is a lot better without WWE. And I think WWE is a lot better without Vince McMahon. And I cannot sit here with a straight face and, and tell you guys that I genuinely want Vince McMahon in the WWE. Okay? I understand he's got influence in there. He's always had a little bit of influence even when he was out of the company, and that's fine, and that's cool. Uh, I, I will always respect the, the contributions that Vince McMahon and the WWE made to the entire industry, but it is time for him to move on. Um, it always bothered me, too. You know, you think of the idea of Stephanie and Shane being the ones to take over when, when he's gone, right? And that's not happening. Now, I can't – look, I'm not Vince McMahon. I have a company. It's called Ango Media, Right? If I took Ango Media to a multi-billion dollar company, I would, of course, leave it for my kids and their grandkids to eventually take over. Vince McMahon is not doing the same. Vince McMahon did the merger. I feel like Vince McMahon is looking to get paid and get out. What does that mean for Triple H? I don't know. What does that mean for TKO and its future? I don't know. Hopefully, we could be optimistic about it. Hopefully, a future with Vince, Vince McMahon not in the WWE is something we could all be optimistic about. Um... It's obviously very clear that TKO understood the risk, right? Endeavor understood the risk of, of keeping Vince McMahon on board. If he cashes out and gets paid, cool. Uh, hopefully, WWE continues to, to do big things. They're doing big things these days. But I feel like things could be a lot better without Vince. And a lar large part of that is actually because of the releases. Earlier today, I made a video about some releases. At the time of the video, there was only a few that were announced. WWE has continued up. There's 15 plus uh, that have been confirmed. I'm going to go through the list in just a second. But guys, WWE is not the end-all be-all. 
I know I've had wrestlers reach out to me. They've watched my videos in the past. If you're somebody that's on this list, if you're somebody who has lost your job to the WWE, just understand that this industry is so healthy right now. There are so many good things happening in this industry. There's companies like Deadlock Pro Wrestling, GCW, Impact, MLW, NWA, AEW. And I could sit here and I might criticize business decisions. I might criticize booking or whatever it may be. But that's because we want a better wrestling industry. I want every company to put their best foot forward and put out the best possible product. And sometimes companies do it and sometimes they don't. But the reality is if you're one of these wrestlers, this is WWE is not the end of the journey. And I think a lot of people on social media are putting that message out there that it is, oh, it's the end all be all. That's not the case. It really isn't the case. Um, you see wrestlers out there every single day. Some of them are using social media and creating content and they're doing a hell of a job promoting better than some of the companies do. You can learn a lot from that. Uh, the list has grown exponentially. Dolph Ziggler, Shelt Shelton Benjamin, Elias, Rick Boogs, Aliyah, Top Dalla, Madcap Moss, Emma, Mustafa Ali, Shanky, Dabakato, Mace, Mansoor, Dana Brooke, Quincy Elliott, Daniel MacArthur, Ulyssa Leon, Bryson Montana are the ones so far confirmed. And at this point, there is a belief that there may not be any more releases after this. Things could always change. Um, but, yeah, WWE talent are released, and it's a big list. Uh, some of these people are going to leave WWE. The, the non-compete ends in December, December 20th. They'll obviously be paid for the, for the rest of their 90 days. Unless they were an NXT talent, they only have a 30-day non-compete. Um, but they'll be paid, of course. And I, I look at this as like a... a for, for the talent and for WWE, honestly, I get it. It's business, business, merger, cuts, different vision of what they want for their future. And some of these people, like, look, Shelton Benjamin, hell of a talent, Dolph Ziggler, hell of a talent. Every single person here, I can make an argument of better booking decisions or creative direction for each and every single one of them, right? When I see Mason Mansoor on this list, it, it, it's that was a Vince McMahon idea. It got over, and they're still gone from the company, right? Um, I can sit here and pitch a creative idea for every single one of these people for their future in WWE. WWE obviously doesn't feel like it's worth investing them to them. It's business. It sucks. They're losing their jobs, and it's these are not fun videos to make. But the uh, the reality is that because WWE isn't the end of the journey, if any of these individuals want to go on and do better things, they can. And I think that's a really good thing. Dana Brooke, I've seen people, they, they criticize me for praising Dana Brooke, but the reality is Dana Brooke showed up every single week, improved. She got over an NXT. That's a beautiful thing to see. Now, if you're a talent, right? If you're a talent and you're not getting better, you're not improving, maybe you don't love wrestling. I don't know. It's a, it's a different feeling. But some of these guys on this list, man, I look, I look at Dolph Ziggler and Shelton Benjamin, veterans, veterans in WWE. Dana Brooke and Dolph Ziggler, 20-year and 10-year tenure in the company Shelton Benjamin over 20 years I mean like their loyalty to the company does not get rewarded they they don't but they all have potential to do great things everybody on this list has potential to do great things and that's what matters and, and with impact and, and AEW and New Japan and all of these different things happening it's good it's good it's good that there's other companies out there that exist because these people can go into those companies and show WWE what they missed out on. And um, for WWE, I, I hope they have a clear plan of what they're doing in the future. And I'm going to bring up a big reason why. It's new ownership. Typically, the last time we got these massive releases, it was all the indie talent. It was, it was all the people that came from the indies and the black and gold NXT, and then they got cut. And now WWE is retaining a lot of them. WWE is retaining a lot of the the, the in-ring workers that they've signed. The tryouts that WWE has upcoming are indie, uh, indie wrestlers. Uh, it, to me, it appears that WWE might be going back to that. They brought in Brian Pillman Jr. They they tried bringing in Colby Carino. That, that seems to be in limbo. But they tried bringing in a couple indie talent. They continue to look for indie talent. I think that the greatest thing that these people could do is work hard on the indies look at what Matt Cardona has done you don't need WWE to be a full-time wrestler yes there's benefits for it yes there's probably a lot of positives being there but the thing is it's not the end-all be-all I I'm excited to see what comes next for a lot of these individuals you're going to see some of these people on TV right away and some of these people you'll see 
they probably will never wrestle again. And it's up to them to dictate their future. And that's the reality. But it's going to be really, really, really cool to see some of these people go somewhere else and show us what WWE did wrong. I love watching that. There is nothing better than watching some of these people get cut, go somewhere else, do big things. And you know what? That's the best way to stick it to WWE. And also, I just want to throw out one last thing. With all these releases that have happened, I wish WWE learned from AEW. One point something billion dollar TV deal. They got all of these different big accolades happening. The company is hitting massive records, massive attendance, massive merchandise sales. They're doing very good. You could have just let people finish out their contracts and not re-sign them. But at the end of the day, they chose to make the releases. I get it. It's business. I understand that argument. But from a human side of things, I just feel like it's a little bit grimy. And that's the reality. Good luck to everybody who's been released. Uh, I've made mention of this before. If you're a wrestler, corporate employee, and uh, you have anything you want to promote on my channel, I won't charge you a penny. So just reach out to me and let me know. And don't forget giving out the championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. So uh, definitely don't miss out on that.